All right, the bottom of page three, or the last page of your electron notes packet, has the electromagnetic spectrum on here. So that is referring to all of these different types of waves. And within the electromagnetic spectrum, only a very small portion of that is what's considered the visible light spectrum. Um, and this is kind of where we're going to be focusing, at least for this class. Um, so the frequency, we measure that in hertz. So I'm going to abbreviate that as HZ, or you can put H-E-R-T-Z. We'll kind of break down the properties and then go back and talk about the actual spectrum itself. The frequency is how often a wave passes through a particular point um, on a spectrum. So how often or how many times a wave passes through a particular point. So it's how frequently that wave is going through a spot. And we measure it in hertz. And then the velocity of a wave is basically the speed of the wave. We measure this in meters per second. I say how fast. How fast the wave goes. So this is definitely an oversimplification of the waves, um, really just to get us the basic understanding of what we need to use the visible light spectrum for our lab tomorrow. So if you have other definitions of these that you used in physics class, this is not to say um, anything different than that. We're just simplifying it a lot more. Similar to how we simplify mass and basically just call it weight because it's pretty much the same thing. Velocity, for purposes of this class, is the same thing as speed. So velocity of all waves in a vacuum is constant. And what we are going to be using is the speed of light. So I have this little speed limit C thing over here. So the speed of light is denoted as C. And this is 3.0 times 10 to the eighth power meters per second. That is the speed of light. And then we'll back out just a little bit to start looking at the actual wave spectrum itself. When we talk about waves, something that comes up a lot is the term wavelength. And I think that a lot of people will try to overcomplicate it. Wavelength is quite literally the length of the wave. So over here where you have these big long waves, that has a long wavelength. And over here where the waves are really close together and short, small, quick, that is short wavelength. So over here we have long wavelength. And over here we have short wavelength. If I were to pick any particular point, um, and compare it to, um, to determine the frequency and then compare that frequency to wavelength. Something with a long wavelength is associated with a low frequency. So long wavelength, I'm going to say just a down arrow for small or low frequency. And something with a short wavelength is passing through the same point more frequently. So if you think of these waves as actually moving, it's going to have a high frequency.
And then the big part that I want you guys to be able to take away from this is where there is more versus less energy. So if you're looking at this, I just think that it looks like low energy. It's slow, they're drawn out, the wavelength is long, the frequency is low. This is lower energy. So I'm gonna do down arrow energy. Versus on this side, they're more choppy, they're closer together, the frequency is a lot higher, the wavelength is a lot shorter. This is associated with high energy. And I really do just think it kind of looks that way. And it's also true. So with this, we can kind of put these relationships into words at the bottom. So wavelength and frequency are blank related. So we're either going to call them directly related or inversely related. So as wavelength increases, so if we have a long wavelength, we have a short frequency. So they are inversely related. What that means is that as one goes up, the other goes down, and vice versa. In terms of wavelength and energy, if I have a long wavelength, do I have high or low energy? Low energy, just like if I have high energy, I have a short wavelength. So this is also inversely related. So as one goes up, the other goes down. And then finally, frequency and energy. If I have a low frequency, do I have a high or low energy? Low. low. So low energy means low frequency, or high energy means high frequency. So frequency and energy, they're not inversely related. We're going to call them directly related. It's the same thing as inversely proportional or directly proportional. I just didn't use that word. So if it's directly related, that means that as one goes up, the other one also goes up. Or as one goes down, the other also goes down. And then let's use the information that we have actually before that. Um, last thing I want to go over is the visible light spectrum. So we kind of just glossed over this. This is just a very small portion of the elect electromagnetic spectrum. Um, with visible light, we typically talk about it in terms of wavelength. Um, so the wavelength of certain colors is going to be longer versus shorter. Um, so down here where I have red on the visible light spectrum, my wavelength is 7.0 times 10 to the ne negative seventh meters, and violet has a wavelength of 4.0 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Looking at those numbers and comparing them, which one has a longer wavelength, red or violet? Red has a longer wavelength, so I'm gonna do higher wavelength. This one's going to have lower wavelength. Looking at the colors I chose to use for this, I should have color coded it with red and violet, but I didn't. So shorter wavelength for violet. And remember that this is on this side of the spectrum where we said short wavelength is associated with higher energy. So this means higher energy. And the longer wavelength is still associated with shorter energy or lower energy. And then obviously it's a spectrum, so the colors in between um, will change proportionally. All right, so with all of that in mind, let's answer the questions on the bottom. So this part says, which type of electromagnetic radiation has the highest amount of energy? So if we're looking for high energy, are we on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the spectrum? The right-hand side, so the type of radiation on the farthest right, I would say, would be gamma rays. So we'll put gamma rays over here.
Next question says, which visible color has the highest amount of energy? We already answered that. Let's see if you can apply it. Which visible color, which means we're in this spectrum down here, has the highest energy? <coughs> Violet. Violet. And then which type of radiation can do the most harm? So something that can do the most harm would be able to go through the most surfaces would have a high frequency, high energy. Gamma also gamma rays. And then this question says, which type of light, green or yellow, has the most energy? Yellow. Oh, yeah, no, green. So more energy would be closer to violet. So yeah. violet, blue, green would have more energy than yellow. So green. And which type of light would have a longer wavelength? So longer wavelength. Between green and yellow, which one would have a longer wavelength? Okay. Yellow. Um, I do want you guys to memorize the color spectrum in order. This is probably something you already knew, at least from like, maybe another class just from life experience from kindergarten when you learn the color wheel I don't know um, but red orange yellow green blue technically there's indigo in there if you want to call it that and then violet so I just want you to know the spectrum in order as far as the other rays that's more of um, a physics thing so we're not too concerned with that in this class but the visible light spectrum for sure because that's what we're going to actually be working with so if you haven't memorized it yet make sure that you spend some time just reading over it a lot of you have probably heard of this, Roy G. Biv, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. You can use that to help you or just learn the rainbow.